episode 29 of Parent Cast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash tallmommedia. There are over 150,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or your MP3 player. Today's choice is The Leftovers. All the way from Providence, Rhode Island, welcome to Parent Cast, a podcast dedicated to new parents, new babies, and their new lives together. So listen and relax because it's free, it's funny, and it's a lot better than therapy. Welcome to Parent Cast, episode 27. I am your host, Mary Larson. My name is Blake, and I got to tell you, this ain't episode 27. Oh, it's episode 29. 29. You know what, guys? <laughs> you know, it, why did I come up with seven? Episode 29. Episode 29. So, you know, in our, in our tagline, we joke about it being a lot better than therapy. And the truth is, is that both Blake and I are put there in therapy with our first son because he had colic and oh. he wouldn't sleep, and it was crazy. And... Uh, I now have a new newborn and I'm probably going crazy again. So that's probably why I said episode 27. But nonetheless, one of the biggest resources during our crazy times was this book called The Happiest Baby on the Block. That's right. And, By and Dr. We, Javi Cop. And we watched the DVD video the too. The Baby Sage. And it was like, oh my God. It the was Baby like, Whisperer. Yeah. It's like, I wish I read that book when I was pregnant yeah. because it would have helped me a lot until, you know, I had already been lack, lack of sleep. The maybe. Baby God. Yeah. So, you know, if you don't want to go into therapy <laughs> the with sleep a newborn. Sleep God. Check out The Sleep God. My hero. But, uh, so that's. Dr. Javi Cop. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's going to be what we're talking about today. <laughs> but before we do, I want to jump into the judgment-free zone. So if you're a new listener to Parent Cast, we do this judgment-free zone in the beginning of each episode to let you know that we're all in this together, just like they say in High School Musical, okay? We're not perfect. <laughs> we're all in this together. Pretty good. Pretty good. You're like kind of in tune. Da, 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 da. Zac Efron. <laughs> da, da. So my judgment-free zone story this week is mm-hmm. about the potty, mm-hmm. all right? The potty is is really a big deal in our house right now. We have a soon to be two and a half year old, and he is actually talking about poop quite frequently. Mommy poop. Yeah, he like loves to tell me when he's gone poop. The problem is we're really trying to encourage him to let us know before he poops so he can do it on the potty. So the potty is out everywhere. It's out in the backyard. It comes out in the (laughs) living room, and I'm trying to let Reese see that potty is like a normal thing. So it's supposed to be there. I have never gone to the bathroom with the door open so much in my entire life. <laughs> like, it, it, we should just take the bathroom doors off their hinges because the big thing I want right now is for him to see that mommy and daddy go to the potty. And generally, I'm like wearing a baby or I'm holding the baby. So baby is with me in, in said bathroom. And then I'm there narrating what I'm doing in the bathroom. Mommy's going potty. <laughs> Do you hear mommy going pee? Let's be quiet. Can you hear it? That's pee. <laughs> yep. Yep. That is. That's pee. Mommy's doing stinky poops <laughs> in the potty. So guys, don't judge. Because you know what? If you oh. haven't done it already with your kid, you're going to one day. Oh. They have and- to see that everybody poops. <laughs> It's true, just like that book said. So that's my judgment-free zone for this time. <laughs> what do you say, my love? You want to get into the show? Yep. Let's do it. Okay, so today's episode is really focused on newborn babies. That's babies who are under three months old. Correct. If your baby's older than three months, you might need to do something a little different. Or, now, if you, or, or if you're having another baby relatively soon, you may have forgotten about this. Yeah, yeah. So this is really important. When your baby is crying, your newborn is crying, the first thing you need to do is check to see if there's a dirty diaper. Oh, yeah. All right. If that's it, that might be the culprit. Then you want to see if the baby's hungry, which might make the baby then go to the bathroom again and, because that's what often happens. And sitting in poop sucks. Yeah. We don't want to sit in poop. Yeah. And so if you've checked the diaper and you've checked to see if the baby's hungry and the baby's not hungry, most likely your baby needs to go to sleep. Mm-hmm. All right. And everyone acts like eating, sleeping, pooping. It's the easiest thing in the world. That's all a newborn baby does. Well, let me tell you, the eating part is easy. The pooping part is sometimes easy. But you know what's not? 
getting that darn baby to sleep. That sleeping part sucks. It sucks more than sitting and poop. And I don't know where this whole like sleeps like a baby came from because it is not easy. I mean, some babies like this time we have a relatively easy baby. She does not have colic. But let me tell you, we work at it. And maybe she's easy because we know the five S's that Dr. Harvey Cop talks about in The Happiest Baby in the Block. We know them inside and out, guys. <laughs> so we were talking about what is a really good useful resource for people who have a newborn baby or who are about to have a newborn baby. And this is the Bible, okay? The five S's are what are talked about in this Happiest Baby on the Block book. So once again... We are not doctors. No. Nope. So if you're having like problems with your baby and you're like, my baby cries all the time and I don't really know. Don't don't just say Mary and Blake told me that this is what we do <laughs> and you just you know live life with that. If you've got a really crying baby, go to your doctor. Call them. Call the warm line. Call call your mom. I don't even know. But this stuff helped us a lot. Okay. And at this age, you need to help your baby fall asleep. Anyone who says, Don't spoil your baby, don't hold your baby, don't do that, say, shut up. Okay, my baby's a newborn. It doesn't know Jack S. Okay, it doesn't know Homie anything. Homie, don't play that. Oh, Homie, don't play that. Seriously, this baby just came out and doesn't know what's going on. Doesn't even know what's going on. It's a whole new world, as Aladdin would say. <laughs> okay, so you got to help train your baby. Soon, your baby will have to learn how to fall asleep. But that is not. Listen, now. it's impossible to spoil your baby within the first three months. Yeah. If your kid wants to sleep with you in the bed and you're cool with bed sharing, do it. If your kid wants to just be nuzzled up to you, like my daughter is right now as we're podcasting this episode, right now she is sitting in Mary's arms, do it. They, why not? Because in the end, they, they still think like they're they're in the womb almost. Yep. I mean, they call this the fourth trimester. For a reason. For a very specific reason. Because they, they don't know any better. You have to recreate it so it is like the womb, okay? Correct. so. Dr. Harvey Karp says that a lot of new parents are mistaken. They think that newborns need it to be still and quiet to fall asleep, just like you or I might like it to be. Mm -hmm. I can actually fall asleep anywhere, but Blake... I cannot. <laughs> cannot. I could fall asleep like in a subway station on the floor. I can mm -hmm. sleep anywhere. Blake needs it to be still and quiet, and a lot of people think that's what babies need. Babies need movement, and they need noise. They need it to be like the womb. You think about the womb, and there's the whooshing of your belly, and it's warm and all the stuff. Okay, so here are the five S's for calming a fussy baby. First thing you want to do is swaddle that baby up. All Swaddle. Right? Swaddling is super duper key. You can learn how to swaddle if you look online. My suggestion is to buy a swaddle sack. Mm -hmm. All right? Don't learn anything. Your brain's already about to burst. Now I'm going to try to teach you these five S's. <laughs> so skip skip learning how to swaddle properly. You're probably going to do it wrong. I mean, let's be honest. Blake did it wrong pretty a lot of times. But now you're really good at it. But these swaddle I'm, sacks... I could swaddle you. Swaddle sacks are awesome because they are dummy proof. Okay? There's Velcro involved. It's the perfect size for your baby. My recommendation is the Swaddle Me. Mm -hmm. It's got this great Velcro. And the best thing about it is that you can do it with your kid's legs in or out. Because you don't want to swaddle your baby's legs. They need to be able to kick. That's how they get out their farts. <laughs> Okay, they need to kick. <laughs> what you want to swaddle down to their arms. The babies have this reflex called the Moro reflex. And it's like, you know when you're dreaming and you dream you fall down the stairs and your arms fly up? Kind of like Inception. Yes. And you're like, oh my God. Okay, babies do that all the time and it wakes them up out of this precious sleep. Mm -hmm. They are not in control of their arms yet, as you can probably tell when you have your baby and you're like, why are they hitting themselves in the face? What's going on? They need to have those arms tightly bound down. Okay. And they, think about it, in the womb. They want to be yeah, like held nice together. Tight. They want to be held tight so because again, it recreates the womb. So get yourself a couple of swaddle sacks and learn how to do it. Um, as I said, the swaddle me I really like. I like it because you can even buckle them into certain devices, you know, with swing or the car seat and keep mm -hmm. their arms down. So swaddling is the first one of those S's. If you have a fussy baby, Swaddle that sucker. Okay? <laughs> They're flailing around. Occasionally, I mean, Blake is a tried and true dad. This is his second kid. Every once in a while, I hand him our fussy baby, and he just starts bouncing her, and her arms are flying. She's on her back, and he's like <laughs> waving her around, thinking, oh, this is going to be great. And I'm like, babe, her arms are flying around. Swaddle that, babe. <laughs> and he does, and what happens? She goes to sleep. Okay. Immediately. So, and, and even if you don't have the swaddle me, just hold her arms kind of like yeah. uh, like she's in a coffin almost. Yes. And uh, and just hold them there yep. for a little bit. 
and then she'll relax. She'll yep. calm down eventually. Keep those arms down. Keep the arms down. All right. So the the second of the S's is the side stomach position. All right. And this sounds a little scary because you're like, what? What the hell's a side stomach position? I'm supposed to put them on their back. Yeah. And- everything is back is best. Back is best. I get it. I don't like to sleep on my back. I hate the back. I like to sleep. On my side. I'm a okay? side person. So we're not saying put your baby on the stomach and have the baby sleep, but we are saying that to help soothe your baby while you're holding this baby, you can hold them kind of belly to belly. So if you're holding your babe and the baby's all swaddled up, kind of hold them in your arms so their belly's facing you mm-hmm. or even put them kind of like in a football hold. So that their belly is on your arm mm-hmm. and you get to hold them with their face down. The football okay. hold's good for guys. Mm-hmm. The football hold, go hold for guys rocks because, you know, you, you feel like you got the football on your hands and the kid's light enough and small enough where you can grip it like you're 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 trugging down the hundred yard mark, you know, and, and, and scoring a touchdown. You can totally do that. And it's comfy for guys. I like it a lot. Yeah. So, you know, the just be careful. We're not saying put the baby on the sleep for for on their tummy for sleep. No, 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 no. Not the tummy for sleep. The the back is for sleep, even though it sucks. You know, I'm also I'm also a kind of guy that like kind of does like a half hip kind of thing. Oh yeah. Where, you know where I keep my leg up. Yeah. No, you don't think so. No, I, I get you. I see you. <laughs> so I per- personally like to have my baby on her side, um, and that's how I hold her and help her get to sleep. Whether I'm sitting in a chair or something, but that's how I like to calm the baby down. She doesn't like to be on her back when she's being calm. Oh yeah, and for and for guys, this is good too because if like you're stuck at home with the kid, and it could because you know you want your wife or your partner to go to go out and and, and enjoy themselves, which you should be doing often. Get them. Take your shirt off, man. Take the shirt off. And let them smell you. Let the baby, not, not your wife. That'd be kind of actually. Never mind. I'll just let that You're one. You're just go. trying to say get some skin to skin. Get some right? skin to skin, okay. and get them laying next to you on the bed, sideways, like on their side, and then they'll calm down. I swear to God, this will happen. It's like the reverse spoon, if that makes yeah. sense. So yes. lie down, shirtless. Have that baby in just a diaper. Maybe get a little swaddle to put um, if you wanted to swaddle. But you can either do it, if you wanted to skip the swaddle spot, if you wanted some skin to skin, do the skin to skin on the side. Mm-hmm. If you want to just lie side to side with the swaddle, just make sure that you do not fall asleep. Okay. You don't want that baby falling asleep side to side with you That's in a no swaddle. Good. Can't have that. Um, and you never want the baby asleep on his or her side in a swaddle. Yep. Okay. So that's really important. I know it sounds weird because it's like swaddle, but put them on their side. But, it's, <laughs> but don't is, put them on their this side. This is while you are with them. While yeah. you're with them trying to calm them down. All right. So the third S is shushing. Shushing. Okay. Shushing. Like that's, that's What's something shushing? that's- shushing? Shushing is going shh. Okay. So you want to get up in your baby's ear. You don't want to just lightly say, shh. Remember, babies like it to be noisy. So I guess they said that the sounds of our womb were as noisy as you being in a shower. Really? Yeah. Wow. So if you think about that level of noise, what it's like when you're in the shower and what it sounds like with the water... I mean, it's it's not loud, but it's not quiet. No, it ain't quiet. So I don't think you could sleep in the shower. Well, although I've slept in the shower. Before. Well, the shower is now like white noise, so you want to shush that loud straight into your baby's ear. Yeah, in, in like because if if your baby is is really hollering big time, like really going at it, the baby isn't going to hear you going. Shh, it's okay, honey. Be Shh. quiet. You no. got you got to kind of be like. Shh. Okay, you just hurt people's ears, but yes. I, I, I backed away, you know? And you want to do it for almost like five seconds at a time. A oh, really yeah. strong, it's basically kind of trying to jumpstart the baby. Because if the baby's really fussing and crying, you want something to almost startle them out of that cry. They're just so pent up and anxious about their cry. You want to get in their ear and calm them down with a familiar sound. Okay, so you can either be doing that as shushing, or if you don't want to you know, turn red because you run out of breath. No, purple. <laughs> you can get different apps on your phone. You can get white noise machines. What's the one that we had? The sleep pillow. Yes. That's what we have. It's like this beautiful little owl. That's our favorite app, the sleep <laughs> pillow. Um, That's a good recommendation. The and that, sleep pillow. I like the sleep pillow app because it doesn't have a timer. We also have the sleep sheep, like the travel sleep sheep. The problem with that is it only goes for 45 minutes. Mm-hmm. So you kind of want to have consistent white noise while your baby sleeps. So 
you get the shushing while you're holding them. You can be doing that. But when you finally do get the baby to sleep, try to keep that white noise going. So get yourself a white noise machine for their bedroom or just stick your phone app next to their head and, while and, they're and sleeping. And don't worry about the white noise like deafening your kid. Because th- there was like this movement going around there for a while. Like, oh, well, white noise. If it's played too loud, it's going to make your kid deaf. No, it's not. It's just not. I mean, don't go playing it at 45 billion decibels. Yes, that would probably deafen your kid. But for the most part, within reason, play the white noise and it will not make your kid go deaf. I promise. Okay, so you've swaddled your baby. The baby is on his or her side and you're holding and you're shushing. The next thing you want to do is get in the swinging. Oh, I love the swing. Okay. Huge so fan of the swing. You can either put the baby in an actual swing. hmm all right, which now the baby's on his or her back. Um, maybe the swing has some white noise. But really think about the swinging in your arms, okay? Yep. Get so in motion. This is like the money right here. <laughs> Swaddling and swinging. This is Swinging is going to get your baby to sleep. That's why babies fall asleep a lot in the car, mm-hmm. because of the movement. Think about it. They slept so much in the mother's womb because they were being moved around a lot. So you want to do some like quick, jiggly, very tiny movements. No more than like one inch back and You're forth. You're actually doing it right now. I, I know, because <laughs> it's keeping her asleep. So you want to do like little jiggle movements. I often want, like right now, she's belly to belly with me in a swaddle and I love to just take her bum and shake her bum because what you want is you want their head to move a little bit back and forth actually and that doesn't always get accomplished in the swing and we're not talking shaking we're talking jiggling yeah you want a jiggle head you you don't want a shaking head because that shaking baby that that ain't no good yeah just a slight little movement in the bum or so that her head is is just jiggling a little bit. Like take a couple of ball, like a like a like a like a golf ball, and jiggle it in your hand or something. Mm-hmm. That's that is the kind of movement we're talking about. So it's just really like a quick little rocking, an inch or so back and forth with your hands, and keeping that baby straight to your belly for that side. And the swinging is gonna help. And then if you want to transition this to a baby swing, so that there's still movement, mm-hmm. awesome. Get awesome. that swing and put that baby on freaking. Max. Yes. The put that, best like, movement, the bigger the movement, the better. If there's like a, a number five setting, put it on the five. If, there, if there's like a 10 setting, get it on 10. And then, and then push that baby. And what I even do too is like we have the rock and play. I'll even get the rock and play and I'll do really quick uh, movements. You'll do the little inch movements in the rock and play. In the rock Ooh. and play with it too. So that way like I don't have to hold her or do whatever. I, I like can just that. I can do it all at once. And now, that's the way that's the way that I do it. But get that get that swing moving as fast as you can. So as Blake said, I'm actually doing the swinging right now and I'm sitting in a stationary chair. This is a midday nap, so it's not not too rough to get her to sleep. But if this was the witching hour time, Ugh. which is really tough on babies. Painful. And the reason it's so tough Tough on babies, it's tough on me. Yeah, but they've been overstimulated. Okay? I'm overstimulated. They they are new to this world, as I said, a whole new world for them. And yeah. they've been soaking it up from morning till now night. And they just can't take it anymore. I just can't take it, they want to say. But they can't, so they just cry. And they're often up for a longer period. So if it's the witching hour time, get yourself a yoga ball. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is the best piece of advice we could ever offer. You probably have the yoga ball because you were maybe using it towards the lighter part of your pregnancy to make sure the baby's in the right position and to help with labor pains. But get yourself a big yoga ball, swaddle that baby, hold that baby belly to belly on its side, and bounce. Bounce. Okay? Bounce, you are going to be moving that baby, and they are going to calm down. You can shush in that baby's ear, and it will make you feel good, too, because you might be a little anxious at this point. You mm-hmm. might be a little fed up. It's the end of the day. Just bounce. Put it all out in your quads, all right? And you're going to put that baby to sleep. Now, I, if your baby is tough after you stop moving, put that baby in a swing. All right. Like immediately, as fast as you can. And if you if you still have to bounce, with Reese, our first our our, our first child, I bounced on a yoga ball for hours, hours on end. I would watch full movies bouncing on a yoga ball. I think I watched The Dark Knight and The Dark Knight Rises in one sitting while bouncing on a yoga ball. But you know what? That's what I had to do. And trust me, if my kid, if my son Reese can can go to sleep while you're about ba- while I'm bouncing on a yoga ball, your kid can too. Cause my son was a giant 
pain in the butt. And okay, so there's also some controversy. So I'm talking about swinging. I'm talking about how you're going to be shaking this baby a little bit, jiggling this baby, going on the bouncing ball, using the swing. Um, If you need your baby to be in a swing overnight, Put your baby in a swing overnight. Move that it. swing into your room. Um, now, mind you, I'm talking about newborn time. Mm-hmm. This first is three the, the first three months. And if your baby needs that movement to stay asleep, and if it means that you're going to get a good, chunky sleep period, mm-hmm. like a good five, six hours in a row, oh, doesn't that sound amazing? That it can great. happen. Why are you squeaking, Sophie the giraffe? I didn't mean to do it. She squeaks. That's what Sophie does. <laughs> get yourself that swing and put it in your bedroom it took us a long time to figure this out and we were like is this okay is he always going to sleep in the swing no no they're not he's not going to be some 15 year old sitting in a swing hey mom can I go in my swing please but sleep <laughs> is what your baby needs they need it to reset their bodies you need it as a new parent so you don't go crazy and need to have therapy like we say in our introduction okay everybody needs sleep so if your baby really thrives on movement we're not going to judge you Okay, Mm -hmm. do what works best for your family. Judgment free zone, baby. That's right. Put your baby in that swing if you need to and let them swing all night. And Mm -hmm. you know what? A lot of those swings have white noise on them. Mm -hmm. Amazing. All right. So we have for the S's, we have swaddle. Yep. Side stomach position. Done. Shushing. Nailed it. Swinging. Bring it. And the fifth S is sucking. (laughs) I'm just going to leave it alone. I just hate that word. Sucking. Sucking. Anyway, so we all know babies suck. They have to suck to eat, Mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. They will suck on a bottle. They will suck on a breast. They'll suck suck on your finger? They could suck on a clean finger. That's right. Um, Pacifiers. All right. So if you are breastfeeding or bottle feeding, a lot of people might say, oh, don't give them a pacifier until they are eating very well. That's true. Okay? So sometimes they give it to you in the hospital they could, they'll tell you like your baby's doing a great job eating. If you have any concerns, you might want to wait with the pacifiers. Once things have gone well, like my baby is an excellent feeder. By now we've got a great rhythm going and she loves to suck. Okay. But not to eat. And I realized this because she would eat and then she would suck, suck, suck and just spit all the breast milk out. And, and I was she'd like, cry a little bit. Yeah. I'm like, this girl just wants to suck. She doesn't want to eat anymore. She already ate. But if she sucks on my breast, it's going to you know, drown her in milk. So after she's done and she's starting to get into that nice sleepy phase, I just sneak the pacifier in her mouth and she sucks away until she falls asleep. It is amazing. Now, some people say that bedtime pacifiers help reduce SIDS. Oh. Now, mind you, um, most SIDS occur between two and six months. So I still don't really get SIDS. It's Southern Infant Death Syndrome. It's like the scariest freaking thing to worry about as a parent like that's almost the reason, reason why i didn't want to have a second kid because sids is like you just don't know why there's, there's no reason i like, think it's actually just a huge general term oh um, yeah oh, like colic is colic but, is a huge general term but they do say that having a pacifier can help reduce SIDS. so that's another okay. reason to take on the sucking but say you're without a pacifier and you know, try to see if you are breastfeeding, just see if the boob will help. All right. Or use like the knuckle of your clean finger. Mm-hmm. Always make sure your fingers are clean, of course. But um, grab yourself a couple of different pacifiers. Try them out. These are the five S's. It is going to be a game changer for you. So okay? in review, in review, the five S's are swaddling. We got yeah. that done. The side or stomach position. Got that done. Swinging. Get that kid in a swing or go on a yoga ball and just go to town as fast as you can shushing getting in that getting in the air going shh and then sucking whether it's a pacifier or a clean finger or a nipple eye, whatever you got going on whatever you like whatever the kid likes get them to suck that thing if you do i swear to all that is living and dead if you do all these five s's all at once <laughs> No matter how much your kid is crying, no matter how much, no matter how frustrated you are, no matter how much you want to go to bed, I promise you, your kid will stop crying. And each kid is going to have a favorite one of these S's. Like for for Reese, he loved the movement. He needed that swinging. Mm -hmm. That's why Blake was on the yoga ball forever. But that was what he needed. (laughs) Felicity, she likes to be on the side. And she likes the sucking too. Yes. She loves the sucking. So you're going to find out and so sometimes you can cheat. You might not have to do all five. Correct. If you find the ones that like really get your kid going. Um, but so the nuclear option. Just do all five. Just do all five all and at luckily, once. And luckily if you remember the five S's even if you're very sleep deprived if you're having your hormonal baby blues if you're starving because you forgot to eat 
and you're like, uh, how do I make my baby stop crying? Oh yeah, Mary and Blake. The five S's. Five S's. Dr. Carp. Dr. Javi Cop from Side Stomach. The man's my hero. Swinging, shushing, and sucking. So we hope this helps you guys because it sure did help us. So we spent the whole episode talking about how to make your non sleeping kid sleep and calm down. I think we definitely need time for your wine of the week. Let's like. whine about it. Okay, ready? Here's my wine because it's my turn this, this week, I think. Listen. I love my son. He's great. But now he's starting to get his own opinions. He's starting to like say, I want this or I want that. And I can't tell you how freaking frustrating that is. This is just the beginning. Oh my God. Wait, so, wait, because it gets worse. So he'll tell me, like, we wake up in the morning. I get up with him at like 5.30 in the morning, 6 o'clock in the morning or once in a while. And together we lay down on the couch together. It's like good, fun bonding time. I really love doing it. Um, as a matter of fact, when we got back from Texas this past weekend, the first thing he asked me for was to lay down with me on this couch. It was great. And normally what I do is I'll put on uh, a show like uh, Little Einsteins or whatever, and he'll watch it, and maybe I'll catch a little extra Z's as, as, as he's watching it. But now, the little dingleberry, he's like, I want to watch Little Einsteins. And then we'll watch one episode we'll, about like 10 minutes into it. He'll say, no, I want to watch Mickey. And I'm like, no, okay, all right, I'll put Mickey on. And then about 10 minutes into Mickey, no, I want to watch Chuggington. And I'm like, hell no. No, 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 you just said Mickey. And before that, you said Little Einsteins. What are we doing? Stop, stop having an opinion. Stop having a brain. Just watch what I'm telling you to watch. Will you do that for me, will you? And, and he just, he doesn't want to do it. And it's not just t- television. No. It's foods. It's shoes. It's clothes. He didn't want to wear a, a Mickey shirt the other day because he wanted another shirt. I don't want this. No, different. Different. He's signing different. Whatever Whatever. He the signs sign and says it. Yep. I, it. It drives me I'm insane. really happy that he understands different. And, and then like he also does it with music too. I'll, I'll put on a certain soundtrack that he likes and he'll say, no, I want Batman music. So I'll have to put on. And I'll have to put on the soundtrack to The Dark Knight Rises. Or he'd be like, no, I want I want balloons. And I'll put on the up the soundtrack to Up. He He's turning into a person. And, I, and I'm i having a hard time with this. I got to tell you. Well, I hate to tell you this, but all the people who have toddlers, they're sitting there shaking their heads saying, Blake, you ain't seen nothing yet. Oh, my God. <laughs> my love, what's your win? My win of this week is that we went to a conference in Texas. hi And our baby... Didn't fuss. Didn't fuss. She fussed maybe like once. Now, this is a weekend long conference, guys. And I was taking a gamble, taking a eight week old, you know, from Rhode Island to Texas on a plane. And my trick on a plane. Four hours, by the way. I know that everyone says you want to nurse during takeoff and landing. I did one up better than that. I not only nursed, but I kept my nipple out. (laughs) (laughs) I'm being honest. I kept my nipple out. You're in your judgment free zone. All right. I should have. Just waving your boobies around. I just kept it out. Now, mind you, it was always my inner nipple. So hopefully it was away from other people. (laughs) I sat on the window and I just kind of like, you know. Classy broad. Whatever. My baby (laughs) smelled. I like kept the pacifier in her mouth. And she like, I think she thought it was my nipple the whole time. It wasn't. But I put the pacifier in her mouth and she just had that mommy smell. And she was quiet. And it was great because the plane was full of tons of babies, both there and back. And everyone else's babies got the glares. And our baby didn't. And then even during the conference, I did keep the nipples in during the conference. Thank God. That would have been awesome. Awkward. But I wore her in uh, three different carriers, actually. I had her in the Moby Wrap a little bit. I had her in a Sakura Bloom uh, ring, like ring sling. And then I also had her in the Becco Gemini carrier. We just mixed it all up, you know, tried different things throughout the weekend. But she was amazing and mm. literally slept like the entire time. So that's just my win that it is possible to get out and do things with your baby. Now, mind you, we could have never done this with our son. No, hell no. Our son wouldn't even let us leave the state of Rhode Island. Okay? You can drive through the We couldn't even leave the neighborhood. No, we couldn't leave Providence. He (laughs) would just scream. So if you do have a decent baby, don't be afraid. You know, put that baby in some kind of baby-wearing device and get out there and see what you can do. Go to Texas. Get some barbecue. You'll feel feel like a human again. Oh, my gosh. It's like that song from Beauty and the Beast. Human again. Be human again. <laughs> nope. Oh. I, I got nothing. My Broadway friends will know what's up. All right, so it's my parent pick this week, I think. I want to do one too. You're doing one too? But go for it. I'm going first. Ready? Because yeah. hopefully I'm stealing yours. My parent pick is the Sleep Pillow app. 
Am I, did I steal it? No. Damn. Okay, never mind. It is the Sleep <laughs> Pillow app. I think you can get it on iPhone, and I think you can get it on Droid as well. And it will provide you this endless white noise. We've already mentioned this. Uh, the shushing. In the shushing portion of our show. But you can get it, and it is freaking awesome. They have like a whole bunch of different settings, all different kinds of sounds. It's like you like whales, cool. If you like the, the, uh, the sound of thunder, better. Okay, if you want raindrops, cool. If you want ocean, they got that too. And it just, it's on your phone. And you can have it anywhere you go. So it's called the Sleep Pillow app. And that's what it's for. That's my parent pick. Girl, what do you got? My parent pick is a new type of pacifier that I hadn't used the first time with my first baby. It's by this company named Ma'am, M-A-M. I know. And, you know, we've tried different pacifiers with Felicity and she just kept spitting them out. And I'm like, girl sucking is one of the s's you better learn how to suck on something else other than me because i can't (laughs) handle this and ma'am has um a shape that seems to be pleasing to her palate so go out and try different pacifiers for your baby um but ma'am the newborn ones she digs it My love, before we close up today's show, I just wanted to say one thing. Um, and this, I'm kind of going off the cuff here. This is not on our Gmail, uh, on our Google document that we share. So she's probably, you are probably just as surprised as our listeners right now. Uh, I wrote a, a little bit of a, uh, oh, not a little bit. I wrote an article on Mary's blog, tallmomtinybaby.com. Yeah, it's a shameless plug. Uh, if you go to tallmomtinybaby.com, you can look up Tall Dad and uh, you'll see an article that I wrote recently um, within the past week or so ago that I was afraid that I was not bonding with my daughter Felicity uh, the one that's being held by Mary uh, as we podcast right now and uh, it was very raw Uh, it was very truthful and it took a lot of guts to write Uh, I'm not patting myself in the back I just mean that it was hard to write uh, because I had to face a lot of truths and a lot of difficulties uh, with the idea of not only having a second child but having that second child be a girl and I want to have this shameless plug at TomMomTinyBaby.com uh, because there are second time dads out there like me that I feel like feel the same as me. And they need to know that it's okay if you feel like you are not bonding with your daughter or your son or your second or third or first child. It's okay. And guys, I'm not sure if, if they have a postpartum depression, but they do. Y- you can definitely have a certain kind of depression as it relates to your child and uh, maybe I'm going through it I don't know I'm not sure quite yet but I do know that I'm worried that I haven't been bonding with my child and I will say that the latest trip to Texas uh, for our podcasting conference did help and the reason why I bring all of this up is because during this podcasting conference, we learned about the effect that we as podcasters can have on our listening audience that even though you aren't saying anything to us back right now. We're talking for you. We're talking to you. And even though you may not have the courage to speak, we do. And we can have an effect on you. We can help transform your life if you allow us to. If you We're re- all in this together. We're all, Zach we're Efron. all in this together. No. Uh, <laughs> we, but I wanted to say one thing, which is all of the messages and all of the responses that I got from you, the listeners. um, It really meant a lot. And it was very important. And I read them all. I read them every single word, every letter, and I read them all with with tears in my eyes. Uh, Because (coughs) you guys rock. Uh, And you, and luckily I have the greatest wife on this entire planet within the history of humanity. Uh, and, and as much as we were told, uh, in our conference that we have, um, and we can have an effect on you. I just wanted to let you know uh, before I start to uh, get crazy here, I want to let you know that you guys can have an effect on us too. And, uh, what you wrote and all the support that you gave me was very special. And I'm going to stop blubbering like a like an idiot. So my wife, please save me. You are not an idiot. So if any of you want to read it, um, I didn't even know Blake had re- written this article until it was up. 
just Google tall dad confession. And it'll be the first thing that comes up in Google tall dad confession. But it really actually rang true a lot for me as a, a mom. Um, and a lot of the feelings that people can go through, whether it is postpartum depression or paternal postpartum depression. And that is what it's called. So actually, if you kind of are nervous that your significant other is going through some tough times, there's actually a website called postpartum men. Dot com hmm. And um, yeah, I, I Googled this and found this out after I read Blake's article. But please take a look at it. And if you have any of the same feelings that Blake has been going through, um, let us know. Because as Blake said, we're all in this together. Actually, I said that. Actually, Zach Efron said that. I know. Um, but really, you know, we are. We're all in this. And feeling overwhelmed and feeling sometimes scared or anxious is perfectly normal. Should I even be vain enough to put uh, the link on uh, the episode site? No, that's no. not vain. No, that's, you, that's it's not helpful. vain. Am I okay? I'm so vain. <laughs> no, you're so vain. I know, I know, but I remixed it for you. Anyway, yeah, so I'll, I'll put the I'll put the link on the on the website address but, for this particular episode. Yeah, so I think that would be helpful. All right. Well, thanks, guys, and uh, thank you, Blake, for being on. Well, no, that's okay. That's that's my job. That's what I'm here for. As a reminder, guys, episode 29 of ParentCast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free, 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 F-R-E-E audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash tallmommedia. There, you can find over 150,000 different titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. And today's choice that we have chosen for you as a free book is called The Leftovers by Tom Parada. And it's a little also another shameless plug a little bit because you can listen to our podcast about the television show The Leftovers at thelivingreminders.com. That's thelivingreminders.com. And it's going into its second season. So please read The Leftovers. Get a, get a hold of it. Watch the first season. Go watch the second season and listen to our other podcast called The Living Reminders at thelivingreminders.com. And enjoy the time. And if you want to get a hold of us on ParentCast, you can get us all of our handles off social media, the Facebook and the Twitter and the smoke signals and uh, the Instagram. All of it is all ParentCast. You can also see us on ParentCastPodcast.com where you find all of our great interviews, all the rest of our episodes. And then what else, my love? Paracast at gmail.com. That's what, that's what you can do. reach us at as well. Ready to close out the show? You got it. All right, let's do it. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you for listening. This has been really, really great. Maybe we'll have to do a men's postpartum depression episode. I think we should probably just do a postpartum depression episode altogether. (sighs) Well, it is needed, sadly. But you know what? We're free. We're funny. (laughs) And we're better than therapy. You've been listening to Parent Cast. And to be honest, we're not necessarily better than therapy. So if you do think that you have an issue, <laughs> we are not therapists. We're just more entertaining than therapy. That's We should redo our intro. No, 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 no. We're better than therapy. We're more entertaining. We're funnier. Your therapist is funny. My therapist is like Caesar Flickerman in The Hunger Games. That's amazing. You know what we're still not doing? What? Closing out the show before the music ends. I'm going to push stop right now. <laughs>